In case you were unaware, one of the biggest antitrust cases in tech since the United States versus Microsoft Corp recently started, and the result could be Google being forced to break up and sell off some parts of their digital empire. The Justice Department's allegation is that Google's search engine controls nearly 90% of online queries, and one of the ways that they got to this level of market dominance was by paying billions of dollars to beat out the competition. In 2021 alone, Google paid $26.3 billion to different web browser and smartphone vendors to ensure that their search engine would be the default one almost everywhere. That same year, Google's search advertising brought in $146.4 billion in revenue. So Google is getting more than a five-time return on their investment and it has put them in a position where no other search engine can realistically compete with them. People are so used to keeping their default programs and settings on their computers, so when Google is set as the default, they're basically locked in for life. Whether we're talking about the Safari browser in iOS and macOS, or Samsung's browser on their phones and tablets, and ironically, the only default browser that I really think most people get rid of or just don't use is Microsoft Edge on Windows because of the decades of horror that was Internet Explorer and pre-Chromium builds of Microsoft Edge that were shipping with the operating system. So now it's become ingrained into the long-term Windows user's mind that after a fresh Windows installation, you download Chrome or Firefox, both of which use Google instead of Bing for their default search engine, which makes that search monopoly just a little bit bigger. There have been attempts by Microsoft to outbid Google for the default search spot in Safari, and DuckDuckGo has also done bids on being the search engine by default for private mode in Safari, but the market reality is that Google is the only real choice. Even Eddie Q, Apple's senior vice president of services, has been quoted as saying that there's no price that Microsoft could ever offer Apple to preload Bing in their browser. And Mozilla has also stated in a letter to the Justice Department prior to this lawsuit, saying that switching the default search engine in Firefox would be a losing proposition because no competitor could monetize search as effectively as Google. And the reason Mozilla cares so much about that is because 80% of their revenue comes from Google search ad revenue in Firefox via their default search engine agreement. So if the most valuable companies in the world and Google's old browser rival can't shake their dependence on the search engine, there's no other way for competition to be created in the search engine space. Companies like Home Depot, Expedia, Turo, and JP Morgan all spend nine times as much on text ads with Google than Bing because of how much more widespread Google search is. And these companies are all getting their money's worth in traffic from those text ads. They've actually run different experiments like cutting off Google search advertising and instead spending that money on Bing ads or Facebook ads. And for all those companies I mentioned, the experiments resulted in revenue loss. So even if Microsoft started adding really steep discounts for text ads and Bing compared to Google, it still wouldn't sway them away. They're gonna keep doing what works as long as it works. Now, the antitrust case against Google is still ongoing, and it's pretty rare for one to actually end in the government forcing a company to break up, but we could speculate on what a breakup of Google could look like. And there's a lot of options, since there's so many different areas that Google dominates in, and a big part of the reason that Google got to this level of dominance is because most of the services they offer are technically running at a loss. Like take Google Chrome, for example. This browser doesn't cost any money, it's free to download, and yet Google spends more money than any other browser company 
on developing Chrome. And they do that because they use the Chrome browser for harvesting user data, even in incognito mode. And all this data gets fed into Google's very profitable targeted ads network. And Google is also incentivized to outdo other companies on browser development and get more people using Chrome because control over that browser endpoint lets Google kill off ad blockers that hurt their revenue like uBlock Origin and block out their advertising competitors if they wanted to do that as well. Gmail is another example. It doesn't cost any money to set up a Gmail account and a single person could create multiple Gmail accounts if they wanted to. And with each one, they're getting 15 gigabytes of cloud storage. So the data center cost really start to add up if you wanna provide a service like Gmail. But Google makes it work because while they're giving you all this free storage and the ability to use email, they're scanning all of the emails you're sending and receiving, and they even show you ads in the Gmail dashboard. So again, it both pushes personal data into their ad revenue network, and it's an endpoint for that ad network as well. And the greatest example of running a service at a revenue loss for the sake of data collection is YouTube. So for most people, it probably takes them a while to fill up that 15 gigabytes of free storage that they get with Gmail. In my experience, they typically only do that if a lot of the emails they're getting have attachments or they're storing other stuff in that Google Cloud storage besides emails. But with YouTube, Google has to store all of the videos that are already on the service, and then they have to have room for an additional 720,000 hours of video that get added to the platform every single day. And every time a video gets uploaded to YouTube, Google is re-encoding that video in the back end and then storing different video resolutions as well. So there's multiple copies of all of those videos that are getting uploaded to YouTube. And of course, Google uses compression algorithms and they lower the bitrate of videos to save storage, but storing four or more copies of every single video and having redundant storage for drive failures is going to result in a very hefty hard drive and electricity bill. In addition to the hundreds of thousands of terabytes that are needed for storing this video, YouTube also has to serve the video to people all around the world at up to 8K resolutions in some cases. Streaming video at this scale is one of the most bandwidth intensive endeavors that any company could try to embark on. And there's a reason why only a handful of companies have been able to make a profit doing it. And even though there are options like YouTube premium, movie rentals, channel memberships, and super chats for Google to make money directly from YouTube, all of those revenue sources add up to pennies compared to what Google makes from data harvesting and serving ads through the YouTube platform. We'll have to wait and see what happens to these different services if they end up getting cut off from the cash cow that is Google Ads. So far, the most discussed remedy by the Justice Department attorneys is to divest the Android operating system. Now that would be huge because it would rip Google right out of the mobile market, but it would also probably create a power vacuum for whatever big tech company ends up buying Android and make it so much worse. Like I think Meta might try to acquire Android if they had the opportunity because Apple really damaged their ability to track people and serve ads on iPhones. So this could give them an opportunity to compete directly with them, but that's just a wild guess. Will it be the devil we know, or an even spookier one, to take over the only open source mobile OS in our cyberpunk dystopia? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Give this video a like and share it to hack the algorithm, and check out my online store, base.win, where you can get awesome merch like the Come and Find It hoodie or Little Damon t-shirt. 10% discount at checkout for paying in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.